Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! It means extra money, significantly more money going into the NHS. How much? And that, oh, I'm just about to come on to that. I thought you might want to ask me that question. Um, it means that at the end of five years, by 2023-24, there will be £20 billion more in real terms being spent on the NHS. Now, often figures like that, politicians quote figures like that, they don't often mean much to many True. people. Um, some people may remember seeing a figure on the side of a bus a while back uh, of uh, 350, 350 million, million a pounds week a week yeah. that in cash. Well, I can tell you that what, we're, what I'm announcing will mean that at, in 2023-24, there will be about 600 million pounds a week in cash, more in cash, going into the NHS. Paul Johnson, he's in central London, he's the director of the Institute for Fiscal Studies. Paul, thanks a lot for joining us. So, is it utter tosh? <laughs> Well, I mean, the key, the key thing here is that is a quite a significant promise of extra funding for the NHS, 20 billion at the end of five years, means that it's getting back close to its long run average increase uh, after a very tight eight years. Where's the money going to come from? That we, we don't know. One thing we do know is it's not going to come from something called a Brexit dividend. Because well, the Prime Minister says it is. Well, it can't because there isn't, there isn't one. I mean, the, if, if, for two reasons. One is a simple bit of arithmetic, which is that if you look through to 2023, um, because of the way we're paying the um, Brexit divorce uh, bill and because of the um, promises the government's already made to farmers and others that will carry on spending money that the EU spends in the UK, there is literally no money. The second and even more important point is that the government has already accepted that because the economy will be hit, uh, by Brexit, that there'll be a negative effect on the public finances. There'll actually be at least £15 billion a year less to spend as a result of the, of the Brexit vote. So, in the end, this money will come from higher taxes or higher borrowing. There is not a Brexit dividend there for it to be paid with. Car boot sale dividend. Ian is in Beaconsfield. Ian, what would you like to say? Hello, James. Hello. I tell you what, if I'm a goldfish, that makes you a giant carp, I have to say, because, yeah, you know... Very strong, uh, yeah. It, well, not really, come on. You know, every day you come on and you spout all these words like lies and, you know, and morons and et cetera, et cetera. I use the word moron, so, actually. It's, it's, it's very much a word I, I studiously well, avoid. not far off. I Although, mean, I'm, 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 I am, if you insist, I am prepared to make an exception in your case. But carry on. <laughs> OK, so, uh, we, give, we give 350 million. You've just gone through all the figures. You know, the, the net figure's probably 200 million. The remaining 150 million um, goes to various scientific projects and farming and all lots of kickback to people who support the eu and further their agenda so for example when, when we know for example well i just i just said like farming scientific research and various but, but for example who gets kickbacks well people who support the eu most of most of the money the farming the farming community came out quite strongly against it despite the advice of the nfu so who, who gets the kickbacks that supports the eu well, that, that's my belief, but let's... Can, can we're, we we're not, not talking about beliefs, are we? We're, talk, we're talking about fact. We are at the point, the point you just made about kickbacks and the EU support. So, well, so who are well, you talking that's, about, that's Ian? I think a lot of the money is, but anyway... But, but so who are you talking about, million. Ian? Who are you talking about? Oh, you're doing it again, aren't you? You're not yeah, going to no, anyway. asking no. questions and insisting you back up your, quote, beliefs, end well, quote. But rest assured, I'm not going to call you a moron. So what are you talking about when you describe institutions... Institutions that get kickbacks? Institutions that get kickbacks, Ian? <laughs> uh, James, yeah, yeah, it, it, you, do, you don't want to make people, you know, express their opinions on your. I'm show, repeating you? your words if back to you. On, I'm repeating your words back to you and asking you to explain yourself. You can say I can't, I and then we'll carry that on. Money that comes back, yes, as in the past, is, is kickbacks of people who support the EU. For example, their agenda, right? That's just my opinion. For you example, know, you can do whatever you like. For example, I'm not going to give any examples because I'd like to get to my. Okay, point, don't please. give me any examples, but carry on. You're definitely yeah, not a moron. That, that's my opinion. OK, yeah, you call me what you like. That, that's your defence mechanism, isn't it? No, no, you're it's definitely not a moron. They disagree with you. You're definitely not. We haven't disagreed yet. 
you've told me some beliefs and then we both agreed that you can't back them up. What have we disagreed about? Right, OK. So um, we have 350 million at our disposal. Now, if, if the government at the time decides to continue to fund all those projects, then the net figure will remain at 200 million or thereabouts. What project? Whatever. What project? Well, God, James, can I make my point? Yes, if you just have to back up the words that you use, what projects? Look, I'm not, I'm not an expert <laughs> on what this money funds. I know. So, so what are the projects? Just give me one project that you're talking back. about. One project. All sorts of stuff. It well, goes one, to then. medical research, it goes to community projects. So you want to cut farming, medical research? To... Sorry? You want to cut medical research? No, I didn't say that, did I? You well, you that. did. You said if we don't fund these projects, no, I and I said, said what projects, and you said medical that. research, and I said, so now you don't want to fund medical research. But I didn't, yeah, but I'm, no, I, I, I'm not saying that at all. So I what are you saying, Ian? The day, at the time, what are you saying? As the, well, if you let me talk, I can say it. But I need to clarify so that I can understand what you're saying. You just said that we won't fund these projects. I said what projects? You said medical research. I didn't say we won't fund them. You did, mate. I said... See, no, see, this is your tactic, isn't it? Yes, it is, repeating right. back your own words you to you and asking you to again. explain them. Do you want me to start again? Yes. Right, OK, 350 million, approximately 150 million debatable, comes back in various projects, assorted projects. The government of the For day example? has the option to... Oh, there you go again. Yes, well, we've started what again, so now you can tell me what the projects are. Oh, James, you are so... Oh, Ian, come on, mate. It's really easy. Here's the thing, right? If I said, Ian, there's all these projects, and you said what projects, I would tell you. Do you think people buy this tactic? Do you think people don't realise what you're doing? What am I doing, Ian? Well, you're trying to humiliate and bully your caller. No, I'm not, Ian. I'm asking you to explain your own words. Coercing, as far as I'm... So what projects, mate? Uh, there you go again. Asking you, you to explain your own words. But when you say, am I going to let you finish, do you mean I'm going to let you talk... Well, I haven't got to the point yet. ...in a way I, that you can't I, explain, I, and I'm not going to challenge you, you in any way? Is you continue uh, No, to I will do that, actually. I'm just going to be quiet. I'm going to be quiet now, so you fill your boots. You. Go. Right, so 350 minus 150, they have the option to continue all those projects with that money or not to. But if they decide not to, then we have £350 million. Pounds. It's there. You know, when we leave, it's there, basically. It doesn't matter what the economy does. If we stayed in, they would have to find that money anyway. So that money is then available. So it's not fictitious, it's real. OK, so we have that money, basically, to choose to invest in the NHS. So it's not fictitious, so that makes you a giant carp, if I'm a gold, goldfish. You just spout the same stuff every day. You know, it's not a lie. It absolutely isn't a lie. So there is money available. Now, whether they can cover the whole bill with that £350 million or not is, is, is not the point. The point is that we will have an enormous amount of money that at the moment does us no good because it goes off to the EU. Some of it comes back in to support EU-funded projects, which further their agenda, in my opinion, and I'm not going to prove it. And that's the point. It's not fictitious. Over to you. Go on, James. I'm, I'm, I'm still listening. OK, well, that's my point. So you finally let me made it, but you know, it's ridiculous. It's painful listening to you sometimes on the show because you're you're not a professional at all. You don't it's let optional. people make their points. Well, you've made your Sorry? point now. Okay, well, thank you very much. So Good I do point. let so I do let people make their points. <laughs> Eventually. Okay, so now what what are the projects that we're not going to pay for anymore? Confuse them. Ian, what are the projects that we're not going to pay for anymore? Yeah, here you go again. Well, could you just tell me now? Well, some of them are scientific, some of them are community projects. So less some of them some, are, yeah, but just give me some examples, mate. Farming, it goes to all sorts of stuff. Well, I don't have to give you examples. I think, you, you know, you, well, no, you don't. Of course you don't have to, but if you don't want to sound ridiculous, you do. But, no, not at all. I don't sound So ridiculous. just one, one example? I only sound one, no? ridiculous. No? Nothing? Gullible. Come on. I follow you. And Ian? What? Anything? What? Anything? James, I'm going to go to... The projects? <laughs> OK, mate. Have a great day. You're definitely not a moron. See from Ryan in Tower Hill. Hello. Good afternoon, Sheila. You don't believe she's lying to us? Well, listen, let me be honest with you, right? I'll say what I'm going to say and then we'll leave it like that. I find it quite outrageous, right, when we sit there listening to a journalist on LBC who openly called the Prime Minister of this country a liar, right? Now, if you do that... OK, we're now into the situation that Nick Clegg knows all about, OK, with the student loan fees. If she doesn't then deliver on this promise, OK, do you think we're all going to forget about it?
you think she's not going to be questioned and brought up on it? She's put a line in the sand now. That line will expect to be honoured. So should she um, come into power after the next election or whenever there is one, this promise now has to be kept. Because if she doesn't, look what happened to Nick Clegg and the Liberal Democrats when they promised free student loans. Mm. I'm not, I, I'm not particularly doubting the figure. I'm doubting what she's describing the figure as. My problem is, Sheila, is when... Please don't take this the wrong way. A journalist, of all people, tells us the Prime Minister is a liar. I don't believe for one second the type of person Theresa May is. She set out to per intentionally lie. I don't believe that for one second, OK? What I do believe is that she's put a line in the sand now, and boy, she's got to stick to that. Well, she's already had a rap on the knuckles twice from the statistics authority over how she presents figures. So she's got form, Ryan. These are the same statistical authorities that told us the minute we voted leave, there would be um, financial and economic catastrophe. No, this is the, no, this is the body that, that makes sure when you present stats, you, you do it uh, honestly. And they've wrapped her on the knuckles twice yeah. already since she's been and in office. Thought, all those stats when the um, um, predicted results of the stock market in all our economy. No, but I'm talking. Uh, but but I'm talking specifically about how truthful she is about the NHS. Twice the st statistics authority have chided our prime minister over how she use, uses statistics in the NHS. Once her own conservative colleague and the chair of the health select committee uh, said that she had misspoken because she can't use the L word. She said she had misspoken. On funding for the NHS, these aren't th these aren't things I'm inventing, Ryan. These have happened. The Prime Minister plays fast and loose with the truth of NHS funding. Well, and I'm going to come back to you again and say this is such a massive pledge, Sheila, a massive pledge, twenty billion pound. What's that? Fifteen percent of their budget increased every year, right? So, therefore. Three point four percent. I don't know where you got fifteen from. Three point four percent. Hold on. So we spend a hundred billion pound a year on the NHS, yeah? A uh, hundred and let me get one hundred and twenty-two billion a year. One hundred and twenty-two billion. If we now, so what's the percentage of an extra twenty billion? It ain't five percent, is it? Three point four percent every year. Because 2023. I'm just giving you the Prime Minister's statistics. Uh, whether it's a Brex Brexit dividend is, is, is the thing I have a problem with, not the statistics. Thank you very much, Ryan, for your call, Ryan in Tower Hill. Mike has called from where in Hertfordshire to carry on, our, or to begin, actually, to prompt uh, a conversation uh, about child migrants uh, and how we treat them uh, here and in the United States. Um, it, it, uh, are we getting it right here, Mike, do you think? Well, no, we're not getting it right. Um, I, I'm, I have the benefit or the... <laughs> I don't know how you, I'm, I'm over 70 years old and I've watched this country decline through uh, the wrong um, uh, way of immig uh, controlling immigration. And, and we've got, we're going downhill and we have been for 20 years at a rapid rate of knots because we don't have a strong enough immigration policy. This call is basically about, when you talk about child immigrants, first of all, you've got to define what a child immigrant is. Well, an eight-year-old is a child, aren't they? Well, the, the evidence that I've seen is that many of the, of the so-called children that are coming into this country, both legally and illegally, are not children. No, but I'm talking specifically about proven children living in detention centres with parents, not not the 15-year-olds who look like 18-year-olds that no, cause so much no, distress to people. Do, what we've got to do, Sheila, whether, whether you like it or not, what we've got to do is to stop illegal immigration in this country. That's what we've got to do. Yes, but not, not I know, I know, and rightly, but not all of the people uh, in these detention centres are illegal immigrants. There are question marks over their status. Some of them are claiming asylum. Well, Legitimately. Anyway, anyway, once you get into this country, and this has been going on for years and years, once you get into this country one way or another, you can claim asylum. But, yeah, but, but do you accept that it, it is sometimes legitimate to do so? No, no, but... The thing Never is, to claim no, asylum in the UK about, ever again. No, what I'm talking about is when you, when you get someone getting into this country legally or illegally, whether they're a child or an adult, the issue is... What do we do with them? 
What we've been doing with them for years is, as I understand it, is giving them a slip of paper, asking them to come back to some uh, place, you know, to be assessed or whatever for their... And they just disappear. No, we're detaining them in numbers. Well, well, some of them, but we've already got between the the, the, the uh, migration, which admits that we've got over half a million illegal immigrants here. But, um, so you can probably double that. Yeah, but what I'm specifically trying to get to, what I'm specifically trying to get to, Mike, is yeah. is in the phase where a, 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 a demonstrable child, a, a, you know, someone's clearly a child, is in the country with their parent and there are yes. still question marks over their right to be here that, that are being investigated yeah. lawfully and appropriately and all the rest of it. How should we treat the child? We should at least let them have an education, shouldn't we? No, we shouldn't. No, no. we shouldn't. Let, oh. let, them have an edu- let them have an education, Sheila, in the country from which they've come. If they've got even if they're fleeing they're real danger? No, even even if they're a 14-year-old girl who's been trafficked? What, we well, show her no well, compassion. Well, you're 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 picking out specific. Well, well it's because I'm I no, I am deliberately no, I am no, I am deliberately doing so, Mike, because over half a million doesn't mean anything. We can't discuss what we do with over half a million people because in, the, in within well, that we half, can. well, no, we but can, within we, yes, we but we have to, discussing. but we won't treat them all the same, is what I'm saying. No, no, but what you're doing, well, you're doing, you're picking out a specific incident, and you're you're making out that we're we're unfeeling and uncaring in this country. And I'm we're not. not. I it's don't think we are. We're, immigrants have been running circles, running rings around us for years and years. Immigrants, half a million. Immigrants, half a million. We have to speak in specifics. If we don't speak in specifics, then we do become hard-hearted because if we don't regard these people as human beings, it's very easy to just say half a million, get rid of them. But if I say that 14-year-old there who's been raped for three years because she was trafficked, it's a different story. If I say that eight-year-old whose mother brought her across the Mediterranean from Eritrea because they were being hounded uh, by terrorists and couldn't live safely. It's a different story, isn't it? That there are real stories of genuine need, Mike, and I'm just trying to find out how hard or soft-hearted we and America are as a nation. Yes, deal with yes, deal with things legally, but also deal with them in a human way. Uh, we don't want what is happening with immigration in Europe to happen with us, says Donald Trump. When was that? Today. Back to the United States now, and despite a chorus of criticism, much of it from his own Republican Party, President Trump has doubled down on his tough new immigration policy, which has seen thousands of children separated from their migrant parents at the border. In a speech in the last hour, Mr. Trump accused the media of helping smugglers and traffickers and accused asylum seekers of hiring professional lawyers to give them false stories. His opponents say the policy is an affront to the decency of the American people. Fatima Manji has this report. This is the sound of zero tolerance. Children separated from their parents in a U.S. detention camp. The secret recording was released by a civil rights lawyer to investigative journalists at ProPublica. The distressing sounds of children crying have heightened the backlash already begun in reaction to these disturbing images. More than 2,000 children have been separated from their parents as they attempted to illegally cross into the US. Zero tolerance means the parents are arrested and the children housed in warehouses like this one. People that come in violate the law, they endanger their children in the process, and frankly, they endanger all of our children. Mr. Trump has blamed the smugglers, the Democrats, and the Mexicans for the situation. He says he's dealing with illegal immigrants trying to infest the country. Not with me. We're taking them out by the thousands. We're taking them out by the thousands. The Trump administration has claimed separating children from their parents is merely following the law. Not the case, says this legal expert. That's an absolute lie. While the law is that they are being held for immigration purposes, they would be with their families. They're using the criminal charges as a means and a method to separate them without giving them all of the protections that the criminal law gives them, including due process, the right to sit down with an attorney and actually discuss their case. So they've taken all of that away and forced them into this particular position. Steve in Hemel, hello. Hi there. Hi. 
Uh, I, I'm not quite sure where, where we're going with this, but are you trying to imply that Donald Trump is stopping these children being with their parents? Because it's strictly not true. I saw a news programme this morning, about nine o'clock this morning, um, with Donald Trump speaking to a news reporter for over half an hour, and at least half of the time he was talking about this problem, and it's being blocked. He's trying to get it, trying to get the children with the uh, the adults, and it's being blocked by the Democrats. Well, you've been watching Fox News. I, I no, I haven't been watching Fox what News. What was I he on? It doesn't matter what I'm watching. I'm, what I'm saying to you. Well, no, what, what it does to me, I'm curious but, because no, I. But you, no, but you, but you, but but why could you know? You don't like Donald Trump. You you don't. Like, it wouldn't matter if Donald Trump gave every person a billion pounds um, in their back pocket. You still wouldn't like him. The fact is, United States is doing brilliantly. He's he's going to stop a nuclear war in in, in North Korea. The economy is doing which great. which is great because he nearly right. started one. Um, I, I, honestly, honestly, why can't you, why can't, when, when, I mean, I, I, I I'm, I'm able to, to, to say good things and bad things about all sorts of politicians. Why can't you actually say that what he's done in North Korea is exceptional? I have, we had a, I, I, I had a conversation, I had an hour's worth of conversations with people about North Korea. Um, I, I won't reiterate it, but I said if he turns out to have, to have denuclearized that peninsula, he has done a great thing. Yes, but well, uh, but the if is as big happen, as the, an if could possibly is, be. But, but, you're, but you are implying this is fake news. You are implying that Donald Trump, uh, Donald Trump, is deliberately keeping these children from these from, from these migrant refugee families. Now it is strictly not. He's true. deliberately. He's deliberately. No, cre- well, uh, well, let me finish my sentence, Steve. He's deliberately created a policy within within a law that has no provision for that policy. There is no law that requires families to be separated at that border. There are. There are. There is document. No, there isn't. No, there isn't. There is no. There is a law that requires people to be stopped when they are coming across illegally. But there is no law that says, "Tell parents you're taking their kid for a bath, and then they don't see them again." That's different. Hey, everybody, it's Jake Tapper from CNN State of the Union and FactCheck.org. This week, there's been a lot in the news about. Uh, families of undocumented immigrants coming into the the United States and being separated at the border. Uh, One report suggesting that the U.S. government lost track of 1,500 children that were part of these families that were separated uh, at the border. So we want to take a look at a charge President Trump made uh, that this problem and this policy uh, is the fault of Democrats. The president made this claim at a roundtable on so-called sanctuary cities last week at the White House. Take a listen. We have to break up families. The Democrats gave us that law. It's a horrible thing. We have to break up families. The Democrats gave us that law, and they don't want to do anything about it. They'll leave it like that because they don't want to make any changes. And now you're breaking up families because of the Democrats. It's terrible. Is that true? Did Democrats give us this law that forces the families of undocumented immigrants to be separated at the border? No, that's not true. Before President Trump took office, many of these families were either processed and released as a family with notice to appear before an immigration court, or they were held in family detention centers together, according to the Bipartisan Policy Center. But in May 2018, the Trump administration announced that All families, all individuals caught entering the United States illegally would be referred to federal prosecutors for criminal charges. Now, under that new plan, a Department of Homeland Security spokesperson says the parents would be placed in detention centers while the children would go to separate juvenile facilities or potentially foster care if they did not have an adult relative in the United States who could take them in. So what law that the Democrats gave us is President Trump referring to when he says the Democrats gave us this law that forces families to be separated, children and parents to be separated? Well, we asked the White House and they referred us to a Department of Homeland Security statement. The statement outlines a 1997 legal settlement that says the Department of Homeland Security can hold children for only 20 days pending their immigration cases as well as a 2008 human trafficking law that says unaccompanied minors from countries other than Mexico and Canada must be placed in the care of the Office of Refugee Resettlement or with relatives in the United States while they go through removal proceedings. So first, that 1997 legal settlement, that's obviously 
nothing that the Democrats gave us. It's a legal settlement. Now, the 2008 law, that was passed by the Congress by unanimous consent and was signed into law by George W. Bush, who was the president in 2008. And it doesn't require families to be split apart at the border, though it does limit where and how long the government can hold these children. In fact, experts say that the Trump administration's decision to hold the parents for criminal charges instead of releasing them along with their children is ultimately what will result in the separation of even more families. So to be clear, neither of the legal examples that the White House gave us forces the Trump administration to separate parents from their children when caught at the border. Not at all. And we're still waiting for any evidence that this is a law that the Democrats gave us forcing the Trump administration's hand. As of now, we have no evidence that that's the case. A reminder to all you politicians out there, you're perfectly entitled to your own opinions, but not to your own facts. Well, unfor unfortunately, unfortunately, your, your liberal view with respect, Sheila, I'm sure you're a nice person, but your liberal view with respect is, is, is you know, it's losing its It's not, losing but its Steve, momentum. I don't have. It's losing its momentum. I don't no, have. You well, hang on. You and, uh, let you, me... are, you and James are both well, li very, very liberal. Can I account for myself really rather than you accounting for me? Can I account for myself? Well, well, you don't need I to think, you every day. I th well, and, well, if you listen to me every day, you'll have heard me say that sensible immigration restrictions absolutely are the right of every nation. And and well, those, and, uh, hang on, and those, those policies should be formed through conversations like this one between you and me and between you and me and politicians. Well, hang on. I can't. But I don't think that they should be cruel and I don't think that they should well, separate agree. children from I parents agree. and I don't think I we, agree. which we're doing, should leave kids in a detention centre without an education. That's not liberal. That's, that's just sane. Well, uh, li li well uh, let me just let me just why didn't you why didn't you do why didn't you do a poll why didn't you do a poll and suggest the suggest two answers um, are, are is the British public um, happy with the open door policy we've got in this country or do they want massive changes and to cut it by at least you know 75 percent well, and see what happens well I think we know the answer to that don't we because if the re because if I the think we know but, but you're talking about numbers Steve and I, I think we know the answer to that not just the numbers, I'm talking about the, treatment the numbers. you're talking about numbers I'm talking about well, treatment be here. most of them shouldn't be here or in America in the first place and it's the same thing that's happening in Italy most it's of who happening. most of it most of these migrants and refugees the West doesn't want the populations don't want it's only the liberal elite you're not talking about the EU the no, you're I'm not talking about the EU. You're talking, talking about United well, States. Well, the EU, Canada, as things I'm stand, the EU migrants have every right to be here as citizens of the uh, EU. Well, uh, yeah, illegally, but for my, for, for my, for my, for my opinion, I think it's been crazy what's happened. I mean, it depends what you do, Sheila. If if you if, if somebody um, was was allowing um, East European, very clever news news people, sort of reporters like yourself to be to go for your job at 60,000 a year as opposed to your salary you wouldn't like it but it hasn't happened to you and James O'Brien has it the fact is you don't know how the other half live you're in a little bubble. well you don't know how I live know. either so I, well, I, well, but I listen to you I listen to you what I'm saying I'm to listening you to you but I don't know anything the, about the, you the, the, the world the world wants change and we want to stop yeah that's fine change is fine politics is fine democracy is fine change that i don't like is also fine inhumanity and cruelty is not so fine thank you steve now president trump has shown once again that criticism if anything makes him all the more determined far from retreating on his controversial policy of splitting up families who try to get across the mexican border without any paperwork he insisted the only alternative was opening american borders to everyone more than two thousand children have been separated from their parents in the past few weeks the outrage is only growing these images of detention facilities where children are being kept in cages, having been separated from their parents, has created a sense among many Americans that this is a defining moment for this country's core values. An audio recording from inside one of those Texas detention camps captures the cries of children calling for their parents and the responses of their guards. 
Bueno, aquí tenemos una orquesta. ¿Y tú? But one man who knows this issue well and who ran the U.S. immigration agency under President Obama says Trump is gravely weakening America. You can be tough at the border, you can enforce the laws, um, but you don't need to detain people and you certainly don't need to rip uh, mothers from their, their, you know, their, or babies from their crying mom's um, arms in order to do that. Uh, but I agree, I, I'm outraged by this decision, um, but I guess I'm not shocked. There is immense, almost unanimous pressure from Congress for Trump to reverse his position on separating families. The Republican Senator John McCain called the White House policy an affront to American decency and contrary to the nation's founding principles and values. Uh, James in Hornchurch. Hello, James. Hiya, hiya. Good afternoon, Sheila. Um, let's put a few things straight with the last caller. Um, CNN put out a photo saying that children being kept in cages and you could see like the cage wire and you could see them laying on the floor. When you see the picture from another angle, you can see the area they're in is as big as a giant Tesco's, OK? That's one thing. Second thing is you talk about, um, oh, it's sadist or whatever. The person you was uh, referring to earlier, Barbara Bush, she wears the Baphomet necklace, OK? She's the daughter of Alastair Crowley, OK? So when we're talking about moral compasses here, I think we need to get our facts straight. Now, Donald Trump is right to do what he's doing because people are uh, irresponsibly leading their children into a dangerous situation in a cynical ploy to get over the border. Now, if they want to put their children in risk, they're willing to do anything to do that. And it's, and it's not right. Now, he's drawn a line in the sand and said, listen, you're not going to do this anymore. You're not going to use this ploy to get into the country by trying to pluck on our art strings using the children. They're not going to come to any harm, but they're going to be detained so that no one else does it anymore. Yeah, you're not, you're but, but if... Perfectly legitimate but if, but if people... Out. I mean, I don't know when you were last in Mexico or, or how much you know about Mexico, but if, if, if those parents are taking their children away from extreme violence and poverty, uh, then... Th that's th Mexican that, people's problem. That's, pardon? The Mexican government's problem. It's not that... It's but, not that's, but that's why problem. people claim asylum, like James. in Africa isn't our, isn't our problem. Okay? But that's why people it's claim like asylum. This, that's the point of claiming thing asylum. This thing in the West where every, every, let's say it, white country has to take on people from all over the world because they've got problems. Because we've done something 200 years ago. Give me a break. OK? This is globalisation. This is an infiltration and taking down our sovereignty. Uh, this is the end goal, to take our sovereignty away through mass migration, so they've got block voting. All right, it's already happening in this country now, you know, and we're not falling for it. We're, we're not going to use people's plucking our heartstrings with uh, this, uh, the children. The All right, children. James, I, I get... You're doing, you know, we know you, what you're doing. Well, I'm, well, I'm not doing anything. I'm asking you some questions. I, I just, I'm really just trying to... I'm, I'm not tricking you. I'm not, I've got no power. I'm not well, tricking I'm you at all. Liberal media. I just I'm want to... I'm, I'm trying to ask you some questions. We don't care about children. I'm trying to ask you some... I'm, I'm trying to ask you some questions. I, I don't. I suspect you care very much about your own children. I'm asking you about some other people's children. Um, very worried about them, to be honest. Well, yeah. All right. Just on that question, on the, on that point of, if let let's create a, a scenario where genuine need exists, a genuine need for asylum exists. Right? You accept that sometimes that's the case, do you? That sometimes. Sometimes yeah. that is the case. But right. Most um, of the time, this is chain migration. This is. There's so many little tricks that people are pulling, right? If, 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 I'll tell you what it does. It, it takes away... But it doesn't take away our responsibility to be good to right. children, does it, James? It, nothing takes away our responsibility to be good to all children, respect, does it? With all due respect, with all due respect, it takes away the real cases. There are real cases, right? But people are sick to death of being tricked with uh, economic migrants, opportunists, coming in and, and what they're ruining it for the real people. Right, I, I get the point, I get the point, but I get the point, but I can't, ca can you see circumstances in which it's okay to be cruel to children? Because I can't. Come on, don't be, don't be, but please don't do that virtue signaling and stuff. I'm not, me. that is, the, straight out of the, uh, I'm the not, gosh, you're throwing, you're throwing all the buzzwords at me. Books. I'm You're not, throwing not, all... Jury, I've read not. the history books too. You're throwing all the buzzwords at me. Chain migration, the liberal media. What was the last one? What was the last one? I can't remember now. There's so many in that speech from James. James, I get where you're coming from. You have every right to regard these stories the way you regard them. But 
you didn't answer my question whether you think it's ever acceptable uh, to be cruel to children and the answer has to be no doesn't it wherever you stand on immigration wherever you stand on anything the answer to that question has to be no steve's in islington hello steve yeah how you doing fine thank you what would you like to say uh, well, I think it's uh, everybody pulling on everybody's uh, heartstrings here. Basically, the people who bring their kids and put them in that position, they're the ones to blame, not Donald Trump. He's told them, do not bring your children here because you will be separated from them. And they just carry on going. And I think he needs to make a point or a stand where he just says, it ain't happening anymore. And if you do bring your kids here, then you will be separated and that's it. So but, now, would, but, you, but, take, but, but, would when, you take your child, would you take your child somewhere knowing you'd be separated, well, knowing it, full well you'll be separated and, and let it happen? You it, wouldn't do it. It's not, well, it's I, not, well, not I might, well, I, I might well do it. If I came from the sort of circumstances that Nick was talking about, um, I might well do well, exactly. Well, that's that's the thing because it's a better life for the kids anyway. Quite. So, uh, so yeah, that, there's so, no deterrent effect, is there? Well, well, there, there is a deterrent effect if if they keep taking the children. When they stop taking the children and just just bang them all up, then then that, that then that will stop it. But how? Where do you stop this illegal immigration? It's ridiculous. You can't just keep letting people come and come and come and come and come and, and the country look after these people because they say it ain't just thousands, it's hundreds of thousands. The thing is, I, think, I don't think we should be looking at this through the prism of Britain. We need to look at it through the prism of Americans and virtually every single American, apart from Native Americans, they are all immigrants and, and they will have either come here, uh, come there illegally or legally. Uh, and I, I mean, Donald Trump. His mother was a, an immigrant. Um, his wife is an immigrant, for goodness sake. So you might think that... He, he, look, most of us believe in controlled immigration. I don't believe in uncontrolled immigration. I don't believe that you can have uh, open borders. But there are humane ways of doing things, and there are inhumane ways of doing things. And it, it seems to me that this, this separation of children from their parents is a completely inhumane way of doing things. Uh, and the, 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 the publicity that this has garnered all over the world today does America's reputation no good at all there has to be another way doesn't there Tricia is in Bishop Stortford Tricia what would you like to say oh hi there James hi, I'm a Trisha. little bit nervous oh don't be silly it's only me I know that's what I'm nervous about because I know you don't agree with what I'm going to say go on then OK, I'm going to play the devil's advocate. No, don't. Just tell me what you think. A devil's advocate means you're pretending to believe something for the sake of a debate. Tell me what you think. Well, I'm going to play the devil's advocate. That's the way I see it. So you're not, you're not going to tell me what you actually believe, then? Yeah, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to tell you my perspective Yeah, good. It. OK. Um, if I had a baby and I got in a boat, because I quite fancy going to Australia or New Zealand, and I travelled across various oceans to get there... And then when I arrived, the authorities of that country thought I'd been highly irresponsible and put my child at risk because I'm illegally trying to enter a country. I'm just wondering if that's possibly the way the Americans see it, because at the end of the day, these are people that are illegally trying to enter the country. It's an illegal thing they're trying to do, and they are putting their children at risk by doing it. Um, I travelled... At, at risk of what? Well, because they, they're putting their children in a very dangerous why, why do you think? Legally. Why do you think they do it, Trisha? Well, I, travel, I, I would never have believed this myself. No, just, just why, why do you think they do it? Why do you think I'm someone? I'm trying, to exp I'm trying to explain to you. I travelled extensively in India myself. I yes. backpacked around India for a year, and I saw children that were being mercilessly used, sometimes by their parents, sometimes by people that had actually abducted them, to play on the emotions of tourists and various... Honestly, I've seen this myself. Yes, no, I, um, I, I believe you, but it's not the question I asked you. If, if you're from... I'm just saying people mercilessly use their children to get what they want sometimes. Yes. So and if, if, you, if you're living in poverty... Country, if you're living in poverty in Guatemala and you decide to try to get to America with your family, why do you think you're trying to get to America? Well, personally, if that was me, if I was living in poverty and I wanted to get to another country, I think I'd send my husband first and I keep the children safe. Yes. And then if he managed to get past But the husband is the only me. person that can earn a living and you're already living in abject poverty. 
do you not put any blame on the parents at all? Do you I, not? No, I, I, I don't. I'm for, I'm, no, Trish, I don't use a word blame in the context of a conversation like this. It's the last word I would ever reach for in a billion years. But I, but I respect your right to reach for it first. What and is? You also what, no, you what is? What is? Do you think the reason why? The reason why? Tricia, they, they, they try to get into America with their families. Why do you think that is? Because you're right, there are risks. But what they've done is weigh up the risks and decide that that is a better chance for their children than staying where they started. Well, when in 2015... Just listen to this again, Tricia. Listen again. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. All babies in nappies that have been separated from their mums and dads for, for three or four days. Some of them are teenagers with, with, with perfect English. So just imagine one of them was here now and you, using your experiences of backpacking in India, explain to them why they're in that cage. We were just on holiday and we were talking to some Americans. You're American talking to a teenage Guatemalan now. Go no, on. I'm trying to answer the question. We were on holiday. We were talking to some Americans that were Trump supported. And they were basically saying that many of their friends are having to do four jobs because after Obama... I thought the immigrants issue, took all the jobs. Well, this, this is why they're saying they want the borders closed because they're saying people can't get full-time work. So they've got four like jobs. It, no, they won't give them a full-time job. They've got to do four separate jobs. So, just, to get just explain to, to that. Job. Explain to that Guatemalan teenager why they're in a cage. You, using your experiences of backpacking in, in India. I, I think there's children in this country the Americans are more concerned about. They mentioned the Charlie Gard case, the Alfie Evans case. Yes, but that's all yes. the alt-right propaganda that's designed to no, make Americans no, reject no, socialised health care because they don't no. want rich people, don't want poor people getting treated. Americans but but talk again to that... that Tricia, this isn't an no, argument. Just to explain no, to that... Using your experiences of backpacking in India, explain to that Guatemalan teenager why they're I'm locked in a cage with two two thousand four year olds you don't let people explain unless it's what you want to hear. No, I want to hear your answer. Charlie Gard has got nothing to do with that Guatemalan teenager. Because children in this country are treated terribly. And the perception from America is that... OK, so you're telling a Guatemalan teenager that they're in a cage because people in Britain are treated terribly. I'm telling the Guatemalan teenager that their parents should not have brought them to a country illegally. But, it, but, it, but it's better than where they came from. The risks they've run... You, you, don't, you don't know that. So why do you and think they've done it then, Tricia? Because there's a globalist agenda. George Soros is funding a lot oh, of there we are. to get rid of all the borders. You okay. know that as well as I do. I know and one I know thing, Tricia, and, and I, honestly, if, if you had a brain cell, my love, it would die of loneliness. It's one minute after 11, you're listening to James O'Brien on LBC, and there it is, you see? That's how it happens. That's how you can listen to that wailing and that weeping and then log on to Infowars or Breitbart or wherever it is and, and talk about George Soros. Only Syria... We all know how appalling the situation is in Syria. Only Syria is ahead of Mexico when it comes to violent death, criminal violent death, homicide, murder. Uh, only Syria is second to Mexico. So if, if, if you're still wondering why so many people are leaving Mexico and trying to get themselves into the United States of America, it's because huge parts of Mexico are entirely lawless that kidnap of famous people, powerful people and ordinary people just as much is routine uh, for ransom, that drug killings are running rife. Uh, so I I imagine for a second that you live in an environment like that where nobody can come to your aid. So you might begin to understand why some people in those situations decide that they will have to take their chance and run with their family, run with their babies and run with their children, which is why what's happening to them at the US border once they get there is an abomination and from my money it's it's an abomination that cannot coexist alongside accepting a visit from Donald Trump at the moment. Um, what do you say? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three Simon, you disagree with me, I think. Um, yes, I disagree with you vehemently and I think that your viewpoint is a dangerous one to hold. Um, and I'll explain why. Please do. Um, the, the issue around refugees is quite specific. A refugee is someone who is fleeing war. And that person is under an obligation to stop in the first safe country that they reach. It is not 
a charter for you to leave a failed state, uh, to leave a crime-ridden state, or to leave a poor state. If we continue on the path that we are proceeding on at the moment, the time will come when we will no longer accept valid refugees, people who are genuinely fleeing persecution and genuinely fleeing war. And a valuable tool in international law will have been lost. And, and if I might add one other thing, mm -hmm. effectively what President, uh, President Trump is doing, he is enforcing a law that's been on the statute books for a number of years. If the U.S. Congress objects to it, the U.S. Congress should uh, repeal the law or change it. CBS News legal analyst Ricky Clayman joins us at the table. Ricky, good morning. Good morning. Everybody who looks at those pictures, it just makes your blood boil. It's hard to believe this is happening in the United States of America. How is it possible that it's okay to separate these young kids from their, their parents, all under the guise of we're just enforcing the law? Is there a law on the books? No. Um, there is no law on the books. There was a settlement of a case back in 1997, the Flores case, that somehow gives this administration the ability to say that they will have a zero tolerance policy. But when the Attorney General and Sarah Huckabee Sanders go and say, the, use the Bible as an analogy, yes. and say that thou shalt obey the law, that the law is really not there. It is purely policy and it can be changed. Can change the policy. legislation has to come from Congress. And that's why. And well, if, if he's merely enforcing the law, he wouldn't have required an executive order to add to the practice, add the practice of separating children from families would he? Uh, in fact, the interesting thing about that is that was required uh, by the Ninth Circuit of Judges in the US, which is also one of the most liberal group of judges. And the idea originally around it was to ensure child protection, because just because someone appears at a border, uh, the border with a child, and don't forget these people are not. Yeah, I've heard this used. I've heard this used um, as as a as a way of defending what's going on at the border. Uh, do, do you do you imagine that the vast majority of those children have actually already been kidnapped? by strangers who mean them harm and that those people with them aren't their parents. Is that what you're telling me? Well, in fact, if you look at the figures, there's only 2,000 accompanied children who have been arrested at the border. And the point is they're arrested uh, attempting to cross the border illegally. And I think there's a further 8,000 children who've appeared at the border unaccompanied and, and, if and I, then also tried to cross the border. If I tell you that, you know, you talk there about legitimate... Uh, asylum seekers. If I tell you that, I don't know whether you were listening just before I spoke to you, that only Syria is more violent than Mexico when it comes to homicides and that the International Institute for Strategic Studies uh, says that uh, the intense violence fueled by Mexico's drug cartels uh, amounts to a level of armed conflict for the people living in that situation. Does that, does that change your view at all? No, it doesn't, because the fact is that this is, this is not something we can just change at, uh, at will. There is a, an established, internationally agreed process for what's considered to be a refugee. No, but you can change, but be specific about the, the events of the border. You can decide or not to separate a person from their child, can't you? Not if you're following the law, you can't. And the fact is that Donald Trump is, is following the law. And yes, part of this process is, is to have a deterrent effect. Because if those individuals, if the 2,000 accompanied children had not tried to cross the border illegally, but had presented themselves at po a point of entry... Well, well, I'm going to stop you there before you even finish that point, because that has been laid to rest uh, five minutes ago, ten minutes ago, by our guests Megan McKenna and Clara Long uh, from Human Rights Watch and Kids in Need of Defence, working up close and personally personal in those situations in, in the United States and saying that that is a myth about the laws around seeking asylum in the United States at that particular point on the border. But Simon, thank you very much for your call. Simon in Basingstoke. Uh, Lee has called from Basildon. You, you have some sympathies for uh, Trump's woes, Lee. Yeah, I just can't believe the end. It's like you, golden boy O'Brien. It's like all day I've been listening to it. Now, you had someone on O'Brien's show comparing it to Auschwitz which I think is, a, is an insult to the people that was at Auschwitz and survived Auschwitz. Because I'm pretty sure that none of these kids are being starved to death. None of them are having operations performed on them whilst they're still awake. None of them are being routinely taken out and executed. So to compare it to Auschwitz, I think, is a bit over the top. 
Okay. I mean, I, I, I haven't compared it to Auschwitz, and I don't think those camps are concentration camps. Yeah, all right. Well, it wasn't me, so <laughs> shout at them. Uh, and then we've had China here, who have got a despicable human rights record, routinely executing people, imprisoning them for no reason, yep. yet they get a full state visit. Didn't you say nothing about that? There was no didn't say not didn't say nothing about that. There were protests. Protesters were arrested. We covered it. But not on the radio. I yeah, think we did. LBC, yeah, you, know, you didn't do a whole day of it like you are doing to Trump. Saudi Arabia, when their dignitaries come to visit, questions over. Definitely it's questions over. Day, yeah, visit. questions were asked. It was day, covered. Okay. So you give it the same. <laughs> I'll tell. Shall I tell you why? Shall I tell you why, Lee? It's like the difference between witnessing a crime in the street and finding out that your own kith and kin has committed one. That's the difference. Well, what do you mean? It's the same thing. What I'm saying is, I don't expect from China or from Saudi Arabia or from, uh, you know, in the days of Ceausescu. I don't expect the same from them as I expect from our close ally, America. Yeah, but the leader of the free world. What I'm saying the leader I'm of Trump. democracy. I'm not agreeing with Trump. I'm not agreeing with Trump. What I'm saying is, you can't have one rule for one and one for the Yes, you can. They should have stopped yes, China. you can. Have I expect Arabia. more from America. I, do, I expect more from America. Do you not? I expect a lot more from the whole world. Yeah, well, yeah I do too. You down that road, but you, you're not going to get that. But the person that was on before, they're saying about how we chew. If, if that's like me saying, do you know what? I sold me ass. I took the kids and the white. We jumped on a flight. I went to America. And do you know what? They said I couldn't live there. That's yeah, can I just do that? Can I just rock up at America? But you know what's but, 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 but you know what's happening now? If you if you if you did that and came back without your kids and never saw them again, you might have something to say, Lee, no? Well, I'd be a bit stupid just doing that, wouldn't I? It was like yesterday on Ian Dow's show saying forty three percent now of school kids, their parents can't afford for them to wash, brush their teeth, they can't afford shampoo, they can't afford soap. So really, we're we're like refugees. So how comes this forty three percent? I ain't leaving England to try and get into America. Mexico is the second the most country. second most violent country on the planet. But you can't take every... That's like this country, the fellow before saying, oh, well, we're just as bad because... Where do we put them all, Sheila? And who pays for it? I'm sick of... He didn't use... Well, well the fellow before, if you mean Jason Isaacs, he didn't say that we're just as bad. He didn't use that terminology. But, Lee, thank you for your call, Lee and Basildon. Um, uh, things were going a bit OTT on our criticism of Trump. Um, it's because we expect more of America, uh, which is why. I, well, that's why I am so shocked by this. Uh, if you told me this was happening in China and worse, I wouldn't be surprised because China routinely allows its baby girls just to die in rooms called dying rooms. So I'm well used to China. Um, um, but how far are we from uh, America doing the same? God, I hope I'm wrong. Uh, Mark in Twickenham, hello. Hello there, yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, I just wonder, I wondered why, if you, you know, you're having a go at Donald Trump and uh, why why uh, you haven't tried to get the uh, American ambassador or some representative of Trump on to put his side of the story as we just seem to have... We have, no, there have, been, there have been voices on air explaining why what? they think this is happening. I'm asking, I'm asking listeners no, no, for no, their no, view. You, no, no, you, you, you've had lots of spokesmen from pressure groups, but you haven't had a spokesman for Trump. This hour you're talking and, uh, about? Well, when I've, when I've been listening, I mean, I don't listen all the time because I've, I've got things to do. No, well, yes, but don't assume that those things aren't it. happening in the period of time that you're not listening, Mark, is what I would say to you. Have you had the, have you had the American ambassador on there? On my show, I haven't. Has, has, the, has the station had the American I'll find ambassador? out for you. I don't know what's on every single show every minute of the so. day. And the other thing is, Sheila, is if you're going to have a go at presidents of countries... If Mexico is so dangerous that no one can live there, have a go at why Mexico. Have a go, at, have a go at the government of Mexico. Well, I, well, I did. I did. Salvador. No, no, no. But not like Donald Trump. It's personal. It's only Donald Trump that does wrong. Uh, not it's not only Donald Trump that does wrong. I've, I've described how Mexico. I've described how the Mexican yes. government and the Mexican authorities are completely failing their people. I've said that this very hour, Mark. Yes. Well, if you you wouldn't be you wouldn't you wouldn't be actually complaining if the Mexican president came over here for us. I would be, yeah. Complain. I don't think you would. I would be. Saudi people. And the other the other thing I would say is it's a bit racist to say you don't expect much of Chinese or Saudi people. It's not racist. It's based American on people. it's based on what I know goes no, no, no. on there. It's nothing to do with you race. Should expect that you should accept the, expect the same thing from every, all people. But you know why you know yeah. why I expect no, more no. from America. You know no, why. No no, 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 I don't. I think we're all poor, supposed to be. Ah, the same. you we're know all why. Same rights. We're all the same people, and uh, they, 
And the, and the other thing I would say is you, you're having a go at the, uh, uh, them refusing to let people in from Mexico because Mexico is a very dangerous place. Well, it's dangerous because the Mexican people made it dangerous. Why would you let more Mexican people into your country to make your country more dangerous? So it's fine what's going on there, is it, Mark? No, of course it's not fine, but have a go at the source of the problem, which is what's happening in Mexico and Nicaragua and, Sa and Salvador, why it breeds all these M18 people, these young hopeless men. I know that it does, and, and, and women and children. I, I, know, I know, Mark, I know. But America is complicit in some of those problems as well. And, <laughs> and I'm asking specifically about Donald Trump's visit, so why would I ask about Mex the, the, the Mexican president and, and a, p a putative visit by him? I'm asking specifically about whether Donald Trump's order to separate children and families uh, can coexist uh, with a visit to the UK. That's my specific question, Mark. Well, if, well, well, if, if, What's your specific if, answer if, to that well, question? My specific answer is that if you say to Donald Trump, and if Donald Trump acts on your suggestion that you let anyone come in who's brought a child with them, then that means that they're going to have to let any, anyone... That's, I'm not saying let anyone in permanently who brings a child with them. I'm saying treat them humanely. I don't know how many times I have to say this. We're signing an executive order. I consider it to be a very important executive order. It's about keeping families together. I didn't like the sight or the feeling of families being separated. Any ways that you can address this terror plots that have either been failed or foiled, or in some cases, unfortunately, I'm thinking they have uh, been successful. Do we praise the agencies that have stopped them? Do we look at the causes? Do we talk about this growing sense of the far right? Let's start with Richard in Manchester. What you bring, want to bring to the conversation? Good morning. What are you going to tell me? Yeah, the thing is, good morning. Hello, uh, sir. The, generally, the uh, British people are very tolerant, very reasonable, uh, and very fair-minded. Uh, but it is worrying to hear that uh, young kids, I think you said between the age of 10 and 14, that yes. nearly a third of them uh, have this very negative uh, perception uh, of Muslim people. Uh, and therefore, you know, the question was, you know, how on earth could this be the case? I think there's a question that needs to be asked because... Um, the uh, Muslim population as a percentage of the UK population is anywhere between 5 and 10 percent depending upon what statistics you refer to. Mm -hmm. If you look at the prisoner population in this country which is around about 85, 90,000 prisoners the uh, Muslim representation of uh, detained uh, prisoners is somewhere between lowest 25 percent and highest 30 percent. Where, where do you get these figures from, Richard? Just out of interest. You you, you can get these on any uh, 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 information portal, uh, and uh, I have also uh, connections uh, uh, to the prison service, which yeah. I can't go into detail right. about. Okay. Uh, that would uh, uh, confirm that uh, at first hand. So yeah, I mean, I think it's in this disputable that they are uh, a higher proportion therefore maybe based on that that's how these negative perceptions the reality is that people who are in prison have committed I, crime of one sort or another I think and consequently that's how negative stereotypes are, are starting to be developed isn't I'm not it, saying it's right no no I hear you but isn't it more straightforward than that in that sadly in virtually all of the terror attacks of late that I can remember, the person has either claimed to be a Muslim or has said that he's a Muslim or has carried out the attack as they've yelled Allah Akbar. That's not going to paint your religion in a good light, let's be candid. Well, absolutely not. And uh, that simply uh, reinforces the uh, yeah. uh, perception that we are threatened by a particular, a, a particular uh, group within society that, that are... are that have the same religion, which but a very, well, but a very small part, same. but a very small part of that group is one of us always say. You know, Nick, I've heard this argument so many times. But it's true. A small part. Yeah. But no, but may I just say this Go one on. point because I think it's useful for people to be aware of because it's constantly stated it's a very small part. Well, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. But if a small percentage of 1.7 billion Muslims in the world are potentially dangerous to us that's hundreds of millions of people so it depends what the whole is what the small part of the whole is and right. that's why but it's dangerous to say well, it's only a small number that's, let that's, me that's, do you, wait, wait, let me ask you this just lastly because i must move on when you see um, a roman catholic priest do you see a man of the cloth or do you see a potential pedophile 
uh, I see a man in the cloth. That's I don't precise. see him as a potential that, paedophile. That's, that's precise. And shouldn't that be the approach you see when you, you see someone who's, who's, from, who's a Muslim? I don't see every Muslim as, a, as an Islamic well, terrorist. You, you, no, just, you, tr you just tried to get us to hundreds of millions through your calculations. Well, I'm simply trying to relate when you say, or people say, a small percentage of them commit these crimes, that when you have a very high number, that, OK, let's not call it hundreds of millions, but let's say, you know, the likelihood is that there are much greater numbers of uh, Muslim potential perpetrators than... Uh, than Catholic uh, priests. Uh, well, but simply by the num simply by the numbers, that then the numbers game. You're right there, Richard. Thank you. Interesting background. Sarah Jane has called from France, and we'll hear from Jeff in Munich in just a moment. Um, what are your concerns, Sarah? Um, I don't actually have any concerns, really. Um, Tell me I why. I well, I voted Brexit, which. Uh, I've been slammed for <laughs> by most of the other Brits in my area of southwest France. Um, uh, Fran I mean, if France would be bonkers to penalise us because there are, I think I read this morning, 157,000 Brits in France. We all pay taxes, a lot of taxes. It's not cheap to live here, despite what everybody I think in England thinks. Um, I, and, and I, I, I was just listening to you and you were saying that apparently the Brits want to be able to send their children to university in England. Well, of course, we're Brits. We still are British. At the end of the day, we're British. I don't think we should be necessarily allowed to walk around Europe uh, willy-nilly. I think that we should, we live in France, yes, we are still British, yes, but, you know, I think we have to be a little bit more sensitive to this. I don't see why we should have the right, if we're leaving Europe, to move around Europe as if it was our own. It isn't, and it will never be, and it certainly isn't going <laughs> to be after March. Well, some of the people campaigning, um, uh, perhaps more vigorously than you, Sarah Jane, for their own reasons, um, on this issue, uh, say that if, if Britain hadn't created this settled status scheme, if it had just said, yes, let those people who have EU citizenship now retain citizenship and, and, and the, the right to stay put in, in the country that they are in, let them just make, retain that right. Uh, that, that's what many of the expats abroad wanted. And then this settled status system was proposed, which is what they object to. They say it's unnecessary. Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, if I'm honest, Sheila, I just think, and I, and I am really frustrated by the Brexit process, I just think that people are, on the whole, and that's people, the Brits in France, and I don't know, I, I, I can only talk about France and the people that I talk to and, the, and, and my friends, who voted against Brexit in England. It's hysterical. And and really, I don't think... I mean, I, you know, I don't think that France, for instance, are going to chuck us all out or give us, a, you know, a bad deal because it would be against their best interests. Likewise, I noticed that Britain are being pretty fair, I think, towards European Union citizens but isn't the reality that isn't the reality that all of you whether it's you in france or uh french sarah living in london um everybody's just trying to maintain as many of the rights as eu citizens that they had to start with yeah but why 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 do people think that i mean that would be nice because they enjoy those rights so they're trying to protect well, yes, those rights of course they do. Of course we've all enjoyed those, but we voted to come out. Whatever anybody thinks, we, as a nation, voted to come out. And it is ridiculous for us all to think that everything is going to stay the same. We can't possibly have our cake and eat it. You know, at the end of the day, I think the French will recognise that they would be completely stupid to 
make it very difficult for the Brits to continue living in France. I mean, for goodness sake, the Dordogne area will be a <laughs> desert area. If, you, sa- you know what, Sarah? You sound, you sound like my... This is a compliment, and please take it as such. You sound like my mental image of a British expat living in France. D- d- tell me you've got a fag in one hand and a G&T in the other. Yeah, no, I've got a fag in one hand and a glass of red wine in the other. <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! Brilliant. It might be unpopular, but I firmly believe that if we had a Donald Trump in the UK, we would be in a far better position than what we are. In, in, in what way? Do you want to enlarge on that? Well, he makes decisions. They might not be popular decisions, but he makes decisions. He sticks, sticks by his decisions, and he, he, he give, de- delivers what he says he's going to do, and he tells the truth. Uh, Conrad's in Cheltenham. Conrad, you're on the radio. Hello. Good morning. Hello, Nick. Um, yeah. uh, I'd like to point out that the something that never, ever, no one ever seems to mention, that the cannabis culture, if, you, if you'll admit that phrase, which has done so much harm, was actually introduced into this country by the Windrush generation. <laughs> it was a worry. Oh, come on, my friend. The... Look, hold up, hold up. I'm not cutting you off. And undoubtedly, people of, who come from Windrush and their descendants enjoy... But another massive cause is the hippie culture, and that has nothing to do with Windrush. The hippie culture corresponded with the arrival of people from... No, the, the, hip, the hippie generation. culture's birth was at... Um, Woodstock, over in the United States and prior to Woodstock in the 60s, with everybody driving around in psychedelic clothing, long hair and beads. And has abs- yeah. And I'll allow you... Do, you, I mean, do white people smoke cannabis? Yes. Do mixed-race people? Yes. Apparently Sikhs aren't allowed to smoke cannabis. I didn't know that until this morning. And do black people... You can't say it's wholly down to Windrush, Conrad. I, I don't say it's wholly down. Okay. I say it's substantially down. My own father has told me. He was a student in the 1960s. Right. The first black person he ever spoke to, a member of the Windrush generation, was trying to say in dope. Oh, <laughs> it was, a, it was a very widespread thing among okay. young people at the okay. time. Con- Conrad, do you, do you think... Conrad, no, oh, well, we'll do it this way, then I'll talk over you. Conrad, do you suppose if the first Roman Catholic priest you ever came across acted inappropriately with you, you would then decide to tar the whole Roman Catholic Church? No, I, because I, you're a reasonable I, man and you would know that that is ludicrous. If I met a Roman... Will you please give me the opportunity to speak? Well, not if you if say I things that are deliberately him. inflammatory, no, because it's my job to make sure that you don't speak. But I'm yes, saying you, what I believe is true, but... Well, that, that, <laughs> that's not I actually you good enough. You won't allow anyone to say it. No, I, I will, but I'm not, I'm not going to allow you to write off a whole section of society simply because your dear father, the first did, black person he met, happened to try and sell him some drugs. Now, I'm not going to let that did stand. Did I say I was writing them off? Did well, I say I was writing you, you, them off? Yeah, you, decided, you, decided, you decided that they were mostly responsible for the, the use of cannabis in this country because of your father's first meeting with a black man. He happened to try to sell him some dope. That's my understanding of what it you said. It wasn't just my father's first meeting. Ah. All his friends were smoking it. They were getting it from members of the Windrush generation. Oh, dear. It's a particular social evil. For which, oh not, certainly, not all members of the Windrush generation are responsible. I haven't been to Cheltenham in a while. Them spread that. Yes, it's a I, I haven't been to Cheltenham. Religion. Okay, I haven't been to Cheltenham in a while. Are you relaxed in the company of people who aren't white? Sometimes. And sometimes not. Well, and sometimes I'm not relaxed in the company of people who are white. Right. But so your relaxation, suppose, your level of relaxation, has nothing to do with the colour of anyone's skin. Are you now going to use the magic word racist? No, I'm asking you a question. Your level of relaxation has nothing to do with the colour of someone's skin, does it? Nothing whatsoever. Well, that's pleasing to hear. That's be- so do you not think, lastly, that it's a little narrow to base a lot of your views on a certain section of society or what happened to your dear dad? It's not I mean, the Germans tried to kill my father. I'm- I've not decided to take it against Germans. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm half German. No, OK, OK. My grandfather is one of Yeah, well, my dad fought in the war, but I don't think all Germans are out to kill me. And my view of Germans is not coloured by that. I, I haven't said that no, all right. black people sell dope. No, I've you have nothing of the sort. No, I'm, but you said that they really are one of the key... And, of course, they use it, but I would say they do. Pro- listen, um, we're best to respect your father. Conrad, enjoy your weekend. I sense we're going round and round and round and round in circles. So we'll leave it there. Adam is in Madrid in Spain. Adam, what would you like to say? Yeah, hi. Can I quickly say a word about Airbus? Yeah, of course you can, mate. Or not? 
Yeah, well, what they've announced is simply the start of their screw-tightening process that's going to end in a big tax break for them. OK. So they won't leave the country. They'll just get better conditions under the threat of doing so. Right. But what, what, are, your, just, what are your qualifications? I, mean, I don't mean that to sound... Um, do you work in the sector? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, no. But, but you I'm have some understanding of international aeronautics? No, none at all. But what about? We don't think a big country is going to relocate, because it's, it's more expensive to relocate. They're just, they're just pressing now for the tax breaks they think they can get. And, and you think, so companies can get individual tax breaks, can they? Yeah, of course they can. They don't apply, so, they don't, so cor corporation tax is negotiable? Corporation tax isn't, but there are other things. There are trade union uh, waivers that employees have to sign. There are there but are that, that, that would involve the employees agreeing. It's, it's nothing to do with the government, is it? Well, it, it's simply my so opinion. What, no, and I'm interested in your opinion, as always on this program. I like to examine the facts that lie behind opinion. So, what 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 facts well, is your I'm opinion based, based on? Any, I'm not be, I'm not saying it based on any scientific uh, analysis. I just or knowledge. Large companies or knowledge. Or knowledge. No, okay, well that's fine. So we can no. park that and crack on. What do you want to say to me about Madrid? Okay. Right. Um, what strategy Javid is proposing for EU citizens after Brexit? Um, I think the reaction is. Uh, a lot of fuss over nothing. I had a feeling you might. Is it because it's you already, already have to apply to live in Spain? It's much more... What he's proposing for after Brexit yes. sounds like it's a walk in the park compared to what we have to do... Are you, Spain, are you suggesting that we don't have to leave the European Union then to bring in rules like this? Well, I, I think it's irrelevant whether we leave... I want to be clear that I understand you. Are you, are you genuinely telling me that this, this could all have been done? In fact, he could have gone further without us having to leave the European Union? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. my goodness. I, mean, I had absolutely no idea. Been... I thought this was a direct result of Brexit and that we wouldn't have been able to bring in these rules. I mean, certainly reading the Daily Mail, that's the impression I get, unless we'd actually voted to leave the European Union. So he could have even gone further than this under EU laws. Obviously. It's well, I never. And that is based on knowledge. That's based on personal experience, yes. knowledge, it happens in... Yes, my favourite qualifications. In so, an, another reason, exactly. another lie about Brexit. So we could have had much more control without having to leave. We could. Oh, well, thank you for the call, Adam. That's brilliant. Spain? Pardon? Can I tell you what happens in Spain? Um, yeah, of course you can, mate. OK, well, they used to have a residence permit, but under EU freedom of movement laws, they can't require you to have a residence permit. So now, you simply have to go along to the police and declare your presence. And they give you and, a number. And they could have done all this under EU membership? Of course they could. Oh, my days. It's done in Spain, it's done in France. Unbelievable. All about these Brexiters. How did all these Brexiters end up thinking that we had to leave to do stuff like this, do you think? James, this is all a result of um, absolutely incompetent bureaucracy in the UK. If we can't handle Windrush people who are British citizens, how can we handle three million EU citizens? Well, you tell me. Now, having said all that... Because well, you uh, said it was a fuss about nothing, and now you're telling us that we're not going to be able to cope. Well, we won't be able to cope because we can't cope with anything involved... Well, then it's not a fuss about nothing, then, is it? It's a fuss about quite a huge no. project that you don't think we're going to be able to complete. I don't think anything will change. People Just, will as, a, just as a matter of interest, interest and, and we'll part as friends, I promise, just as a, as a matter of, on a scale of 1 to 10, how well do you think this call has gone for you? Absolutely fine. We're just talking about something. I don't yeah, feel... No, like me too. Uh, I, 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 I give you nine and a half. It's 11.45. Bill in Faversham. Hello, what do you make of it? Uh, Sheila, um, yeah, it could be interpreted a number of ways, but my interpretation is it's actually aimed at the media. Um, that so was my interpretation as well. It basically, um, you know, whatever she does, if she ha handed out gold bars to the poor, they'd find an angle because with respect to the media... Um, Ultimately, what's going down at the border has been going on there for years. When Obama was running it, it was all OK. They're using this as a massive distraction from the fact the economy is booming. Nobody's and saying it was all OK under Obama. It's the specific move in April and then since April to, to separate families automatically when they appeared at the border. Inner politics lead the fate of more than 2,000 migrant kids separated from their families by the U.S. government is still unclear after President Trump's 180 on this policy. Joining me now is someone who had to deal with an immigration crisis himself, former Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson, who held that role for four years under President o Obama. Uh, first of all, just clear something up for me, because we've heard from this administration and from fact checkers that there was, there were family separations that happened under the Obama administration and the Bush administration. Jake, there was no policy or practice 
at least on my watch, to separate women, parents from their children. Uh, there might be individual cases of there it? Were, I'm sure, individual cases for reasons of health or safety. Uh, but we did not have that policy or practice, and it's not something I would have adopted. It's not something I would have permitted. One idea was separate, prosecute everyone, separate kids from their parents, and you didn't do it. Why? First of all, I didn't believe it was right. Um, I spent enough time on the border myself talking to parents, kids, and it's not something that I could envision ever doing, pulling a child away from its mother. You'd live, when you get to the border, you literally see mothers clinging to their children who have carried them all the way from Central America. So it's not something I could do. It's not something I could ask a Border Patrol agent or an immigration enforcement person to do, and it's not something I could float as a deterrent. Yes, uh, but they used Blanket to do that ban. as well because the, the people were illegal. Well, well, they say they didn't. They say they didn't. And we well, certainly didn't see that. these. Well, we, they, but nor did we see these scenes, did we? And, no, you know, but Barack Obama, for all his popularity, he was not a president that was without his critics. Just a second. In 2014, the children were wrapped in silver foil and in much worse conditions, this. But I don't want to distract from Where? That. Which children is, and where? I'm not familiar with it. The children at the border... The pictures that have been displayed, some of them are from 2014. Who not says? Now. Well, several news, news resorts. Which ones? So, I'm just, I mean, I'm asking I, for information. I'm not doubting I, you. I, I just I, don't I, know. But if I can move on, because... Because you don't have the answer to my question. No, because I, I, I haven't researched it. I could well, do. let's not make claims that we haven't researched. No, I know. Because I'm, okay. I'm telling you that I don't know for sure, but no, you're okay. telling me you do, but you can't okay. prove that you do. Okay, okay. Well, I'll, I'll do the research next time. But ultimately... They are trying to distract from two things, the booming economy and a thing called the IG report at the moment, which shows criminality within the FBI and within the Clinton administration. And that is why all this stuff has suddenly popped up. because the Who's they? The, the media are trying to distract from that. Absolutely, because the mainstream media in America is extremely left bias, extremely. So they're not reacting to the child story at all? That's Absolutely all flim-flam. If they cared about children, then they would have been worrying about things like... Well, money. I tell you what, why don't you go off and do the research before you make the claim about the 2014 kids wrapped in four? Because I don't know. You might be right, Bill. Come back to me with the proof. I don't know. You might be right. Uh, but until you can tell me that, then, then don't claim it to be a fact. Stuart in Burnley. Hello. Hello. How are you? Are we being played by the Trumps? Yeah, I think so. Uh, when I... I, I am a Trump supporter, so I'll keep it brief because we'll probably disagree on everything. You don't need to keep but, it brief. You have every right to speak. But uh, Just don't I talk nonsense. The, <laughs> I saw the picture myself. I was a bit, whoa, whoa what's, that, what's that all about, you know? But then I, I thought about it for a minute, and uh, it was just too obvious to be, uh, you know, a lot of the things that have been, been said that it was. And I think it's just classic Donald Trump. I think he's... I think he's brilliant uh, at playing the the media, particularly the left wing media. He's brilliant at it, and he's he's uh, got everybody thinking about the the jacket. And now every nobody's really talking about uh, what the incident was all about, about the separation of kids. Well, I am. So, but, well, yeah. But by Monday, I, I think this will probably have all sort of like uh, settled down. And, Guarantee uh, it we'll won't. To the next Guarantee subject. it won't. No, I think it will. Guarantee it won't. If you, if you go on TV now and go on CNN, for instance, all they'll be talking about is that jacket. And they'll be talking... But that's not the only... The they won't. Months. They'll be talking about the, reun the reuniting of the children. They'll be talking about where the girls have gone. They'll be talking about whether some of these children have been trafficked already into places like New York. They may not have been, but they'll be asking and right, are right to ask all of those serious questions. Yeah, but... If you, if you look at it now, LBC are talking about the jacket. They're not talking but about... But we're not the, just talking about the know, jacket, the, the, are we? We're not just talking about a jacket. We're talking about what it means. We're talking about the policy. We're talking about uh, who Melania is, what the relationship is to the presidency. We're talking about the kind of man Donald Trump is. We're not just talking about a jacket. Yeah, I know, but you, you, you're trying to come up with some, some reason why uh, Melania would wear that on her back. And it's completely got you talking about the jacket. I mean, you're saying you're not talking about it, but I've just been... No, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not... I'm clearly there. talking about the jacket, but, but, it, but this conversation isn't just about a jacket. If it was, I'd just be saying, do you like it? It's nice, isn't it? Do you think it's good to wear words on the back of your clothes? Oh, OK, I, thanks for your call. Bye-bye. But that's not what we're talking about, is it? We're talking about American politics. We're talking about human rights, talking about children being detained. 
Yeah, I know, but like, have a look at the headlines on the newspapers tomorrow and see what see what it says when it, you put, come up at looking at the Trump. Yes, but you about, know that the article about, isn't about it'll fashion. It'll be all about the jacket. But you know the article isn't about fashion. No, it's not about the fashion. It's it's just a deflection, and 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 unfortunately, the media are falling for it. So it, it's giving it's giving uh, Donald Trump if he needs time, it's giving him time. So what do you think? Administration to come up with. Uh, Whatever the next the next plan is, and, who, and who, you've sort of fallen for it, really. Who what? <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to. Who was the message it, sent to? To the media, to the media, because it, it was it was clearly put forward so that the you know the TV saying it, and all the media jumps on it straight away. Why is she wearing that message on the back? Let's talk about that for two or three days, you know, and then. But uh, you do accept, the, don't the you, that we're not just talking down. about the message, the, the well, jacket. It seems, that, it seems that way. I mean, if you're talking about it now, you're talking about it now, aren't you? And I would imagine the newspapers, it'll be all over tomorrow and probably the day after. Well, I'm, I'm just curious, Stuart. I'm just curious that in this conversation, the main reason we're still just talking about the jacket is that you keep saying we're just talking about the jacket. The rest of this programme, but hang on, let me finish the point. The rest of this programme, we've been talking about what this message might be telling us about the relationship that they have, the relationship between them and this story and the events on the border, what people think about the detention of children on that border, what the Obama administration did or didn't do when it came to the detention of families on that border when he was in power. We've talked about all kinds of other things. It's only you insisting that it's just about a jacket. Well, the rest of it is sort of speculation because... Uh, nobody so is knows. the jacket. You know, no, we, we know nobody, it's a jacket, yeah, but that's all we know. Today. Nobody really knows why why uh, Melania would put that on her back. So everybody's got all the views on it and the speculation, and everybody's talking about it. But we're you know, still talking it. about the issues. Yeah, I know, but it, it's the number one issue now, though, isn't it? No. It's, promise, of course it's I not the number one issue. issue. I don't know if you've got a TV there. It, just put CNN on, and I'll bet you any money you'll get jacket straight away. You know, it won't be, it won't be kids in cages. It'll be jacket. You know what I mean, and it's a deflection. No, I think. Well, I, I, I think you're wrong. I think he. I think you're right about his ability to play the press. I think you're absolutely right there. But I think you're wrong about it being the end of the issue. And and then now we're all just interested in, in what Melania was. Uh, but thank you. Great to talk to you, Stuart. Stuart in Burnley. Gary's call from Virginia. Hello, Gary. Hello, Sheila. Hello, Virginia, um, USA, I'm, presumably. I am. I yeah. am in Virginia. Yes. Okay. What's uh, what's the word on the street uh, about the jacket? Lifelong. Oh, let's see. The jacket. Uh, I think, like your former caller said, uh, it's a lot like uh, Donald Trump throwing out a stick and saying "fetch," and the media runs after it like dogs. Um, it's uh, it's humorous. Now, um, uh, that former caller who was berated for not having done research about the. Uh, the uh, events during the Obama administration. I just wanted to say that last night on Fox News, I watched several pictures, not words, but actual pictures of children, groups of children, lying on mats on the floor, covered up with those space blanket, mylar blankets, in 2014. So you can tell me that I was looking at a picture that was fake, but it was attributed, as I recall, to the New York Times and I, you know, I, I don't think they could get away with that. What, what so, bothers, um, what bothers me you, most? That bit of evidence. What bothers me most? Well, uh, well, thank you for the evidence from Fox News. I, I'll bear it in mind. I, if you don't mind, I won't swallow it whole just yet, but I'll bear it in mind. Um, it, what bothers me most isn't children lying on mattresses on floors with blankets to keep them warm. What bothers me most is them not being with their parents. They were not with their parents. This was groups of... Uh, children who look to be about eight to ten uh, boys, all of them, um, in the group of about, well, I'd say twelve, um, and then other pictures, but not uh, two thousand, remarkably similar, they were the exact same um, detention areas, but not two thousand. Uh, yeah. Excuse me, twenty fourteen. No, but not two thousand children in camps. Oh, um, they did. They didn't. They didn't show in two months. Um, uh, every single photograph that possibly was taken during that period of time they just showed uh, three or four photographs had one of them been a photograph of 2000 i would have noticed it no you're correct there was, and when you i haven't seen have you seen the 2000 here in this year here either i've only heard words 
to the effect well, of 2,000. Well, okay, can I... Have you seen a photo of 2,000 children can I once in one photo? Can, I have not. Can I direct you to the fine work of a journalist called Ali McBool, um, whose team put a drone above one... One fellow, one fellow as opposed to the New York Times and Fox No, 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 he is from an organization. No, he's from a news organization. I'm just directing you to some evidence. You directed me to some evidence. I'm directing you to some evidence. Don't know why that would be controversial. Okay, he, I'll, his, I'll take your word for it. Well, well, no, don't just take my word. Go and have a look. Um, Ali McBool, he has tweeted... Are you on Twitter? He has tweeted... Um, footage, it's out there anyway on, on the internet, he has tweeted footage from a drone filming over one of these camps and you'll see the scale of the detention of children in one of those camps at the border. So j just take the time to look and, and perhaps don't, I mean you may not only rely on Fox News, but, but do take the time to look. Aleem McBool, 3.45. Bye now, please, no more.